Hi, I'm going to try to read this letter here. Okay. Over time, believers have de developed various methods of studying the Bible. Some study it systematically by topic. Others use an inductive or deductive method to arrive at conclusions. Still others divide the Bible into stages to make it more manageable, while many simply provide outlines by book, chapter, or topic. Although there is a helpful merit in these various approaches, the Bible itself actually sets forth its own divinely designed methodology for its proper study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's first that's that's um first Timothy two fifteen. In order to rightly divide the word of God, uh, rightly divide the word of truth, we must mark the proper divisions in scripture. The Bible's great divisions are between its various dispensations. Defining defining the terms here. Okay. If dispensation is often defined as a period of time in which God works with man in a particular way, but excuse me, a dispensation is often defined as a period of time in which God works with man in a particular way. But this is only part partially true. In reality, calling a dispensation a period of time gets the cart before the horse. Actually, the Bible term uh, dispensation refers to a particular set of instructions at, uh, or a particular arrangement, arrangement of dealing with people God has chosen to disp dispense during a particular period of time. While it clearly invoke, involves a period of time, it is, the it, is, it is the instructions God has established to be in order during that time that distinguishes one dispensation from another. Thus, at its most basic level, dispensational uh, Bible study is identifying the particular instructions God has administered for a man's obedience and placing them at the proper places on the divine timeline. Take the, concept, the context of 2 Timothy 2.15 as a guide. Um, Hymenaeus, Hymenaeus and Philetus, Philetus have quote, um, erred concerning the truth not because they had denied or questioned the reality or validity of the resurrection. Rather, they had simply placed it at the wrong point on the divine timeline. Uh, quote, saying the resurrection is already past. Uh, verses um, 16 through 18. In order to extract the profit from God's word that he has placed there for us, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, we must approach the study of scripture in this divinely prescribed manner. A profoundly suggestive example of this principle is found in, in our Lord's uh, first sermon recorded in Luke 4. His first sermon here, okay. And that's what this thing is called, our Lord's first sermon. As he entered into public ministry, our Lord began immediately to show he beloved, show his beloved nation how to quote rightly divide the word of God, the word rightly divide the word of truth, and thus to understand just when they stood in the program of in the program of God. Notice how this is demonstrated in his first recorded sermon. Okay, quote, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for, and stood up, uh, for to read, quote, 
And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, verses uh, 16 17. Having found this passage, we, f we know as Isaiah um, 61, 1 through 2, uh, notice carefully just how much of the passage he actually read and why. Quote, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable years of the Lord, and he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and he sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him, verses 17 through 20. If you will turn to Isaiah 61, 1 through 2, you will quickly see why he had their undivided attention. He had stopped reading and blessed the book, and closed the book, right in the middle of the sentence. But why? The answer to the question emphasizes the importance of the right division, the right division of Scripture. Look carefully at the next verse in Luke's account. Quote, and he began to say unto them, the day is this Scripture fulfilled. This day is this Scripture fulfilled in your ears. Verse 21. Indeed, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, anointing Christ, quote, to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent him to, quote, to, to, uh, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and, reco and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to, quote, preach, and to, quote, to, quote, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That uh, but, but, had he continued to the end of the sentence in Isaiah 61-2, he could not have declared, quote, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. For the verse in Isaiah goes on to read, quote, and the day of vengeance, and the day of vengeance of our Lord, of, of our God. The acceptable year of the Lord Unquote, has indeed come, and the Lord was there among his people proclaiming the good news. He stopped reading and quote, closed the book when he did how when, when when he did, however, because the day of vengeance of our God had not yet come. Thus our Lord began his ministry, demonstrating himself to be a dispensationalist carefully rightly dividing the word the word carefully rightly dividing the word nor did he by thus rightly dividing Isaiah 61 2 set aside as untrue the last part of this verse later he warns Israel of the consequences of rejecting him and their opportunity to receive the, the long promised blessing of God on the nation quote the acceptable year of the Lord, unquote, unquote, pointing out the dire results. Quote, For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Quote, But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people Luke 21 22 to 23 it was because this good news was to be rejected by Israel that Israel had gone on to predict quote the day of the vengeance of our God and reject they did demanding his crucifixion John 19 15 records but they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. 
This, according to prophecy, was to be followed by the pouring out of God's wrath. Psalm 2, 1 through 5. Um, 1, 10, uh, 110, 1. Hence, Peter, another dispensationalist, stood at Pentecost and quoted Joel 2, 20, 28 through 32, warned the, quote, the day of the vengeance of our Lord, the, the day of vengeance of our Lord, was, a, was ahead for them